because whatever it is, take to stop the school to prison pipeline, because as a parent, I know that personal feeling. And if we can stop other families suffering, that would really make a big difference here in our city. So many of our young youth of color are ending up at home. We need to stop that. We're here because as most of you guys know, our funding for the restorative justice coordinator has been cut. And this is very bad. Like, I can't say how bad it is. Like, it's really bad. Because for the simple fact that the restorative justice coordinator handles all the referrals that come to us. So if there's no referrals that come to us, then there's no circles that can be done. No circles that can be done equals no support for students equals more suspension equals the school to prison pipeline. So circles are Native American practice used to solve conflicts between uh, the Native Americans in their community. So there are three different types of circles that we use. There's a conflict circle, grief circle, and support circles. The conflict circles are used between student and student conflicts, student and student and teacher conflicts. <coughs> so it's a circle in which we sit the people down that are in the issue and we talk to them about their conflict and try to resolve the problem. Grief circles are used to support a student that has gone, like is, has lost somebody in their lives. And then a support circle isn't necessarily for somebody who has lost somebody in their lives, but more for somebody who needs support who may be like frustrated or they need to be stressed out or they just need like that extra boost. And these circles are so important. Like I really can't stress it enough. We, I have seen such change occur within our school systems. Um, within our school system because of these circles. Like we have really gone to the root cause of the problems. We sit the students down instead of just kicking them out of school because they quote unquote did something bad. We actually sit them down and talk to them about the issue and get to the root cause of the problem and then make agreements for how the issue is going to be resolved. So imagine for example uh, your school and home, right? Your school is like your second home. So you're at school a long period of time. So imagine if at home, every single time you did something bad, you got kicked out. So if you didn't do your chores, you got kicked out. You didn't walk your dog, you got kicked out. If you didn't, if you did something, quote unquote, again, bad, you got kicked out. You wouldn't feel supported at home. You wouldn't feel loved at home. So that's kind of what the school is like. Every time a student does something bad, they get kicked out of class. They get kicked out of school. So what restorative justice does, it creates an alternative to that um, like suspension and it creates an alternative to that and actually sits the students down and makes an accountability act and actually gets to the root cause of the problem. Just I didn't know the impact that suspensions had or any form of punitive discipline. We also did research on how to improve our school. For example, like we did research to change the in-school suspension room. And that's a huge thing. And we learned how suspensions lead to students not only falling behind, but they could drop out. And they could come into contact with the criminal justice system. And I, I say that's an issue for school. That sh school shouldn't lead you to being arrested. School shouldn't lead you to wanting to never be there. That's not what school is for. School is to get an education. And a lot of people say this, but education is different from school. We need to make school a place that students are comfortable in and that students feel supported in. Because if that's not the case, then they're not gonna wanna be there. And schools all across the country have been finding better ways to, do, to stop suspensions and support students, and that way is restorative justice. Thank you. <laughs> So she said that before joining this program, speaking in English first and then speaking in front of people in Spanish was very uncomfortable because she thought that she was going to be judged and it was just like a very uncomfortable situation. But this group has taught her to be herself and to speak her native language and to speak Spanish because it is okay. Right. Um. The first effect I noticed was that kids who were involved in the restorative justice peer leadership program were rapidly developing a sense of identity that was strong, forthright, and diplomatic. They had negotiating skills, and a willingness to confront behaviors that they disliked in a non-confrontational way. With so many of our kids suffering the effects of early trauma, the value of this development cannot be overstated. The second effect I witnessed was a change in the broader school community. The RJ program is deliberately proactive in drawing in a wide selection of youth, 
including those who are typically marginalized. Kids who may never have said a word to one another in passing were now working together in a small, intimate setting to forge common goals and address issues. Seeing this diverse, truly youth-centered movement impacted my practice as a teacher and my sense of optimism about those around me. I had an entire class of mine um, participate in a um, class-wide circle, and we did that about three or four times. And I can tell you that restorative justice in those circles have transformative powers. That class changed for the better, not just um, with their bonds with one another, but academically. Um, and by the end of the year, we were sitting in circles all the time. I'm sure you can attest to that, right, Anson? <laughs> this is my class. <laughs>